John, fire some questions at me before we wrap up the patio party. Okay, so this is about the San Diego Chargers and their draft. That's from REM. He says, I got to say, Lee, that even that quarterback from TCU, like Coach Staley said, when watching him, he jumps off the screen at you. He reminds me of a bigger Drew Brees. In this league, an injury can happen at any moment at the quarterback position. Just look at the 49ers last year. I think even the undrafted free agents have promise. Well, quarterback one is Justin Herbert. Quarterback two is the young kid out of North Dakota State, Easton Stick, who's been an apprentice. He's been third on the depth chart the last couple of years. They think he's ready. And he's kind of cut from the same cloth as Justin Herbert in terms of size, move in the pocket, not afraid to run, play option stuff, things of that nature. I think more than anything else, Max Duggan uh, from TCU is going to wind up on the developmental squad. It'll be a learning curve season for him. Is his, his physique is like Drew Brees. He's a little bit undersized. He's not going to run the football as he did in college. He'll be a pocket guy, but there's an intellect there. They really do like him. So that's down road. But Justin Herbert takes every snap until he goes down. If he goes down, you hope he doesn't go down. Yeah. Um, I mean, just, I mean, we're, it's funny. It's we're, we're in May, but we're all so fired up for the NFL already. Hey, here's another question. This is about the Raiders. This is from Tom Cutler Perriman. He says, Hacksaw, what's with the ESPN story that Tom Brady is in talks to either buy or buy into the Las Vegas Raiders. Wouldn't he rather own the chargers? Wouldn't we all wish he would own the chargers, especially since he lives here. Your thoughts. Well, Tom is going to be an investor. The, the, he has all this loose change in his pocket. So he's going to invest and become a minority owner of the Raiders. This has nothing to do, I don't think, with any football operation. I don't think he accedes to be a general manager or anything along that lane. He's got, he's got enormous amounts of money to invest. And I think he wants to stay linked to the National Football League. You know, if, if we're comparing superstars who just left the game, I'm kind of surprised Peyton Manning is not in somebody's front office. Hmm. But those jobs are hard. Those jobs are really tough. Those jobs are unbelievably demanding in terms of manpower hours. Those jobs are really pressurized. So I think Tom just wants to be a minority owner. He's got the cash in his pocket to do it. So I don't think you'll see him actively involved uh, as a front office executive, at least not yet. At Next question. Not yet. Okay. Uh, this is uh, a, a little bit about the Padres and Dodgers. This is from PC Barnum on the Instagram um, uh, platform. He says, Dodgers Padres rivalry is like a rivalry between a hammer and a nail. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have last October to flash back to, and that was kind of cool for our community. But in the bigger picture of things, there's just a lot of things that have to come together for the Dodgers and a lot more things that must fall into place with the Padres. Uh, the Dodgers have developed, you know, the couple of those kids that are playing pretty well, led by Outman, the center fielder, and obviously what they're getting from Vargas. Uh, the loss of Gavin Lux has really impaled them. Uh, is it a complete Dodger team? No, but it's a team that's playing well together, and I got all those young arms at Oklahoma City who are surfacing and are headed to Dodger Stadium within the next half a season. I, the Padres have to win with what the Padres have invested in because there's nothing they're at AAA, so uh, we won't see the Dodgers for a while now on the schedule because of the, the change in the, in the schedule. You play them only 13 times rather than the typical 19 games, but a lot of work to be done for the Friars for sure. It seems like the national media wants this to be a rivalry so bad, and it just never works. I mean, obviously, Padre fans want to get over on the Dodgers, but, you know, I mean, it's just the Dodgers organization, their player development it's been so good for such a long time. And the Padres kind of, you know, they surge, they come in, they come and go, but they have no sustainability. And it's so frustrating. So hopefully these guys are going to figure out a way to hit. And if they do, they could go on a run. The Padres have invested everything in the current roster they have, what they had invested prior. All those kids in the farm system, John, go through any box score on a Sunday in Major League Baseball. And I bet you find 15 to 20 ex Padre prospects or playing for other people having success like Max Fried, like Ty France. They're spread out all across baseball. Um, Padre season's not over, but the Padres players need to get this thing in gear before this deficit grows too big. Let's do one more question on fans forum. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's um, let's get, this is a kind of an interesting take here. This is uh, from quake fan. He says, diehard Vikings fan here. 
If the Vikes ever win a Super Bowl, Bud Grant will have the best seat in the house. Rest in peace, Mr. Grant. And Hacksaw, you still rock after all these years. Well, Bud Grant was obviously a trendsetter back in the day, a little bit of old school. We talked last week about his quarterback, Joe Cap, also passing away. I, I don't know what kind of season the Vikings are going to have because their defense wasn't real good last year, and now they've purged the defense of an awful lot of players. There's an awful lot on Kirk Cousins' plate to carry this thing. I just don't know defensively where their philosophy is and why they've gotten rid of, in probably two calendar years, so many guys. you you got to have veterans on the defensive side, and they've let an awful lot of guys go. Now, they do have salary cap issues. Their roster may not be done. They may move Dalvin Cook, the star running back, coming off a major injury. He's got a huge cap figure. Obviously, they got to re-sign Justin Jefferson. That's going to be a big cap dollar uh, development. Uh, and obviously, Cousins' contract is coming up, and there's monster money involving that veteran quarterback. They'll be fun to watch. We'll see them very early in the Chargers season. I just don't know that they've got enough football players, especially on the defensive side of the football. Hey, John, 